All right. All right. So here we are, guys. Good evening. Um, YouTube, I'm sorry I had to cut off the stream, but we had to switch to manual record mode. I'll up the, upload this later whenever we get uh, everything completed for the evening. Um, but thank you all for joining us. YouTube, thanks for patience. Uh, and everybody in the Zoom room, I'm sorry for the... Uh, Sorry for the update. Uh, unfortunately, Windows forced me to do an update and it's messed everything up and I'm going to have to try better next week. So in any event, we want to do a webinar tonight on uh, X schedule. And uh, you notice I have X lights open and uh, it kind of starts with X lights. Um, the, the nice thing, the, there's a couple nice things about working within X lights. Um, and X schedule that the two harmoniously do work. So if you are running Windows, uh, if you're win running uh, any Windows computer, um, by all means, uh, X schedule is part of uh, is is part of it's a it's an uh, an added software that's inside X Lights. Whenever you install X Lights, it's a way to run your show. It's free, obviously. It comes with X Lights, but more than that. It is ridiculously simple to get started with certain things. So the reason why we start with X lights first isn't because there's all kinds of cool stuff that you do in X lights that makes X schedule work. It's because that the integration between X schedule and X lights is, um, exactly identical it uses your rgb effects file uh excuse me it uses your network file and uh it uses your um it uses your controller setup uh x lights does the hard work by getting everything ready for you whereas uh, x schedule does all of the uh, automation whenever it comes to playing your show so if you're new to and by show of hands and let me get chat up here i should have had chat ready um, if, if go ahead and chat, tell me how many people um, have uh, use X schedule. If if it's if it's something that you've used or you like using it, um, if you prefer it over FPP or if you prefer FPP over, uh, you can let me know if you like FPP better. Generally, consensus is everybody likes to use FPP, but uh, um, the Zoom room is filled with many people who have issues with FPP. So I always go with what to me feels like the easiest thing, which is X schedule. And today I'm going to try to show you that. Uh, but we'll get started here in X lights. So uh, I, I want to show you that um, I, I don't have any of these controllers hooked up. The, this was a this was a test folder that I created in uh, X lights uh, a couple of years ago. And this is when, when we started doing certified models and, and uh, setting things up and putting uh, submodels together. And what, what I have here is I have a couple different controllers in here. Now, not that I have a ton of things hooked up to these, because that's not the point. But the point is to show you what you do have certain controllers that you run in uh, your show. I have a couple in here. And then what we need to do is we need to make a, a sequence or two. Now, I'm not going to sequence a whole song. All I'm going to do is I'm going to do something very basic because we need something called an FSEQ file. So I'm going to create an animation. I'm going to click Done. And I'm going to do everybody's favorite, uh, the butterfly effect. So I'm going to put a timing mark here. And I'm going to go to uh, the matrix. And I'm going to put the butterfly effect on the matrix. And, uh, oh, what the heck, we'll, we'll put a, a transition in 0.5 and a transition out 0.5. Yeah, not that that really matters. But, um, and then we can do a bars effect on the um, mesmerizer. And I wonder, I wonder if we can do it this way. Oh, you can't. Um, nope, doesn't allow. That's okay. Um, so now we have a sequence. It, it, it's not the greatest sequence in the world, but we need an FSEQ file. And uh, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll save this as a sequence. Um, I'll save it as bars testing. And uh, obviously I have the butterfly effect in there as well. But uh, just two models, that's, that's all we really need to work with it, just to prove exactly what's kind of going on in X schedule so that you know uh, that you can add certain things in. Um, another thing too, before you 
get into doing the schedule, uh, there's two things in Excellent Lights that I want to show you so that you're prepared for this. Whenever you're preparing your show for the season, and if you're new, you may not know this, but X Lights creates a file. It's called an FSEQ file. The FSEQ file is kind of like baking a cake. After you've, after you've sequenced a song and you're ready to play it in your show, X Lights bakes it into a cake. It creates a file called an FSEQ file, and this uh, F sequence or F S E Q F seq file, uh, as it also is known as, uh, this F F seq file uh, is every effect that applies to every bit of model applying to every network channel and so forth. It's every bit of all of the individual graphic channel data combined into one file so that X schedule or FPP can output it to the network to tell the lights when to turn on and when to turn off. So with that being said, I want to go into preferences and there's there's options in X in X lights that you need to know about before you get started. So one of the things here that you want to do is or uh, is make sure you have uh, save FSEQ file uh, on save. So whenever you have this little checkbox selected here, that means that whenever you hit the save button after doing a full render on your on your sequence when you hit the save button then it will create the fseq file if you don't have this checked and i'll be honest i sequence every day of my life all year long and um, i turn this off from about mid-december through probably september and when you turn it off, it warns you that your F-Seq is not being saved. It's not creating uh, an F-Sequence on, on save. Uh, so if you're sequencing in January, February, March, and April, you can turn this off because you don't need a sequence file. But if you turn it off, you have to remember to turn it on. So that's why I'm telling you this now. Um, there's also another function here that you can add if you prefer to ensure that you always um, get uh, yeah, well, it's, it, it, I don't want to say ensure, but it's it's a function called render on save. So let's say you want to close out of your sequence and you want to make sure you have the most recent uh, fseq file. You could hit render all, and whenever you hit the, or you could hit save, and whenever you rend, whenever you save it, it renders the sequence. And because it's being, hey, Clyde, yeah, you've been going on for a while and you haven't shared your screen at all. I swear I have my screen shared. Yeah, you're sharing the one that has X schedule. Oh, okay. Well, that would help. You want me to cancel the live stream and go back? Yeah, let's do that. Son of a gun. <laughs> so there we go. We'll we'll go ahead now and jump into X schedule now that we have a, a kind of a sequence done. Now, one of the things uh, I'm going to jump into my folder here because the folder, is it right here? No, it's not. I have to open it here. Um, I was in X Lights Mesmerizer. Let me go into that one real quick. And I want to show you what the FSeq file looks like so that you know. Um, we're going into desktop and we're going into X Lights and Mesmerizer. Okay, so here is your here is the folder that we happen to be in. Uh, I'm going to sort these files in order of the file type that they are, and you can see here we have a bars testing .fseq. Your fseq files will be some of the largest files in your show folder, um, and obviously that could also depend on the videos or uh, other files that picture files or something that you may also be using, but. Generally, your FSEQ files hold a lot of network data, and uh, it's important to know that um, that if you have a lot of sequences and you have a small hard drive, uh, sometimes those files can get rather large depending on how, how big you uh, make those for. So um, we'll go ahead and minimize X lights. We're going to go in and open X schedule. It may open up on the other screen here. Now, because I, I jump from directory to directory, it's going to happen tonight, and uh, it's good because it, it will uh, 
uh, it may happen for you in the future at some point. But um, usually when you have X Lights open and you open up X Schedule, X Schedule reads the directory that X Lights is re is currently connected to. Now, here's here's a here's the exact directory that it went to was my home folder. Um, oh wow! Look, it found two controllers. That's crazy. Well, maybe that's because it's on my home network, um, because I have uh, I have a, uh, a Wi-Fi controller out in the yard that runs the floodlights, so it might be pick it, probably picking up on those. But in any event, um, if you if you open up X Schedule and it looks like this, uh, I want to go to a blank one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change over to the X Lights directory here that's Desktop X Lights Mesmerizer. And uh, to do that, if you have to manually change your own uh, show folder, go to File, Select Show Folder, and then I'll quickly navigate there. Desktop, um, X Lights, and Mesmerizer. Okay. And we'll select that folder. Now, there should be nothing here. There's no playlist, no nothing. You'll, you'll see the orange and then all of my controllers turn to red. Now, the, the thing that you're looking at right now is this is, this is real... Uh, I don't want to say live, but it's it's mostly live. It's it's a ping from X schedule going out through my network right now. It's sending little little packets of information saying, "Hey, where is this F16 V3 that you said's there? Or where is this controller? Or where is that controller?" And if you hover over these, you'll notice that these are uh, these all have an IP address. So if your controller is uh, is set up with an IP address um, uh, and and it's on the same network. X lights will automatically find it. So this is helpful for uh, whenever you're trying to troubleshoot what's going on with your show. X lights can tell you, or X schedule can tell you rather quickly if your controllers are connected or not. Now controllers luckily don't need to be connected to your show in order for you to use X schedule. You only need to do a couple pre uh, small pre uh, preparatory steps. So the first thing that you're going to do. And uh, you'll notice there's not a lot of icons up here. You only have like a red save button. If you hit the red save button, we're now, we've, we've saved the schedule. There's no schedule in there, but we just saved it. Uh, but anytime you come in here and, and you work on anything, that little red disc will pop up and it will give you the option to save if you want, after you've made a change. So we'll start with the basics. We want to create what's called a playlist. We want to tell X schedule, hey, here's a list of things that I want you to play. Okay, that doesn't mean you're scheduling it. It just means that here's a list of things to play. So if we come in here and we right click, we can add a playlist. Uh, I think you can also double click. Let's try that. I think double clicking does it. No, no, it doesn't. It's so right click, add playlist. Now there's also another option here. This is a, there's a, an option for advanced playlist. Um, we're not going to get into that tonight, um, but suffice to say, there's a lot that X Schedule can do. Uh, the first thing I usually do uh, is give the playlist a name. So, for example, we might call this uh, 20, whoop, 20, if I could type, boy, I can't type or nothing today, 2023 show. And it's always good to give your, uh, your schedule or your playlist a, a, a name because you might do different playlists. In fact, you might have, uh, you might have two different playlist you play throughout the week that that kind of gets a little bit more advanced but it's not advanced it's actually rather easy so what I'll say is is it once you get your show name in there and you you can click on the add FSEQ button here and it goes right automatically to the directory that we've already kind of set um, ahead of time so here you see bars testing dot FSEQ that's the FSEQ file that we created whenever we uh, we're over in X-Lite. So we'll go ahead and click open. And now you can see it here. This is just one step in the show that is available. Now, uh, you might happen to notice that over here on the right-hand side, you have a couple of um, uh, things here that you can uh, make edits or changes to per the individual uh, item on the list. So this step has these functions that you can edit. You can uh, change the blend mode. Now the blend modes, there's a bunch of different blend modes. If you don't know what these do or if you don't haven't messed around with them, the, you, you really don't need to do anything to these. There's just an option if you're running multiple things at one time. Um, 
so uh, for instance, I, I think I, I overwrite if zero um, if I'm using like a background sequence. Uh, but I digress. That's a different it's a different class for a different topic. Um, you can change you can browse for a different location for this file if that's something you want to do. Um, you can limit channels. You can give it. You can tell it uh, only work from channel to channel. Uh, I think. Uh, you can override the audio. If there's an audio file and you want to switch the audio file, you can tell X schedule exactly where to look for that audio file. Um, you can fast start the audio, which I think it preloads the audio for you. Uh, and you can override the volume. Um, maybe, maybe the, uh, I don't know, maybe the audio in the, uh, it, it needs to be louder or softer. Maybe that song's too loud and you, you, you want to turn that down. You can do that here. Uh, you can have uh, audio devices that you can specifically tell X schedule to output this to uh, during the show. So if you have, uh, in, in my case, I have um, uh, uh, the microphone set up, which is USB code 5. It, it could come through here, but I don't want it to go through there. Uh, it could go through one of my monitors. It could go through the speakers, the regular speakers, and so forth. I just leave it, you just leave it as, as default. But, uh, and then we also have uh, priorities. Um, you can also delay uh, how long it takes before the sequence starts to play. And if you have a delay set for this song, let's say let's say the song ends really quickly, you could add a one second delay or it starts really quick and the song before it ends really quick and you want to give it at least like a two second pause. You can do that per the individual uh, FSEQ file. You can give it its own individual delay. So those are some of the options that are here. Uh, if you were going to add a video to play in your playlist that would, let's say, output to your virtual matrix, uh, you could add a uh, video. Uh, you could also add just audio. You could have a song play and no sequence, just an MP3 play. Um, and that's that's your basic options for creating your show. So I know this isn't super exciting, but you basically have a a if you had let's say five or six songs prepared and rendered, then you could have five or six of those songs in there right now whenever you select it. So the way that X Lights is set up, or the or excuse me, X Schedule is set up. I'm going to say that a lot tonight. Um, the way that X Schedule is set up is it is going to uh, only create your once you create this the playlist it doesn't do anything until you tell it what to do and so from this point you have a couple options there's a couple buttons down here that uh, are helpful for you whenever you're you're kind of running things you have a play selected which if I wanted to play this schedule right now or if I wanted to play this playlist excuse me I would hit the play selected and after I hit the play selected you can see that this lights up green and you can see timers starting to, to uh, change time and you can see that X schedule also runs the FPS uh, monitor and tells you how fast the frames per second is actually going on there um, I'm gonna check uh, chat here real quick and mention a couple things Keith said hey uh, uh, can you use Windows emulator on Mac to run X schedule I don't know I don't know if they have an X schedule that runs on Mac I know that somebody was trying to get it to work but I don't know that they actually got it going um, John said do you have to do anything special to get your virtual matrix to play uh, I have, I, I don't use, uh, the only FPP I use currently, I use, uh, now there's other people in the room that probably could answer this later, uh, I, I use a, uh, a Tune 2 sign, and it runs off of FPP, it's a 4P10 panels, and that's it, and I have never ran in a, I really, I've never run a virtual matrix, so if I want a matrix, I, I build a matrix, so that's what I, I put my controller to. So uh, maybe maybe we can answer that later tonight. That might be a good question for the for the group. Um, anyway, continuing on, you can see that once you hit the play selected, it plays the whole way through, and then it stops immediately. If I did that again, let's say you're out there testing your show and you had a bars test, um, this would be helpful for you. If you come up here and you hit this circle button, playlist not looping. If we click the looping button, you could loop the 
playlist and have it continue to play. So if you're out setting up your show and you created a F, uh, an FSEQ or a sequence file that tested the output to lights on all of your props with using the bars, uh, that might certainly help you whenever you are connecting everything up to see is it all working as it's supposed to be. And that is definitely something that I have used in the past. So we can save, again, anytime you see the red disc, you can save it. Um, but yeah, that's that's definitely helpful. Now, if, if it's in this loop, you can unloop it and it will stop looping, or you can just hit the stop all button. Um, so the, the next step is let's let's schedule it. Let's, let's tell it when to turn on and when to turn off. So to do this, you wanna select a playlist. Now you can have multiple playlists. You could have four, five, six, seven, one playlist for every night of the week if you wanted. And what we'll do is we'll hit the schedule button. And the first thing you'll see here at the top is you have an enable checkbox. If you disable a schedule, it won't play. So keep that in mind. Um, we can, uh, the first thing obviously is name your schedule. We can call this daily. And you have a couple options here. Now, the start date to me, usually people don't turn their X schedule on or they don't turn their, their computer on until it's time for them to uh, run their show. So maybe the night before they're doing this. So the start date really isn't necessary, but it's an option in here. And whenever you enter the numbers in, so let's say, when is Thanksgiving this year? I got to go look. I, I haven't even looked to see when Thanksgiving is. So that's the 23rd. So if you go live on the 23rd or maybe it's Friday the 24th, we'll, we'll go with Friday the 24th. You want to hit the numbers in uh, exactly 11. Don't hit the tab. Use your mouse to click over and then hit the number 24. If you, if you screw up and you type the number 65, okay, well, 65 is not a month. <clears throat> Just start over. Um, so 24, I hit 14, I want it to be 24. You have to put two numbers in there to fill it in. And then obviously the year this year, it's 2023. So you could have it start in on uh, the 24th of November uh, of 2023. And then we can run it till an end date. Now, X schedule by default uh, will run till the end of 2099, uh, by which I'm sure X lights will be in version like 2099 boy can't even imagine that um but let's just say let's say the last day for your show is uh the 30th of december so the december would be 12 whoop i hit a couple wrong numbers there one two and then click over and you want to say the 30th of 2023 and you can tell it it's only going to run between these dates the last date that it's going to run is on the 30th uh you can you can set this up to do it every year um, I've never done that because generally it, uh, you know, it's, it's customizable. So I just kind of change this every year. Um, <clears throat> next you have a couple options. What days of the week are you going to run this schedule? How do you want to schedule this? You want to do this every night. I want to do this Monday through Sunday. Um, and you can give it a time down here. Uh, you can also give it an every nth day. Uh, you can do it every day. Offset is zero, or you could do it every two days. Offset is whatever. Um, but I, I really haven't, I haven't actually util, utilized that functionality in there. Keith put it in there, so uh, it must do something ex exciting. But basically, how I run my show is, I, I say I'm going to start my show at let's say 5:30 p.m. That's usually the the time. Now you notice that it says 2200 this said 1700 earlier um it uses military time so uh if you're if if you're familiar with military time uh then this will be easy for you if you're not familiar with military time uh you can just ask google or siri or whoever uh and they'll 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 convert it for you but i happen to know that uh 1730 hours uh is exactly 5:30 p.m. Uh, and then I usually would turn off my show by 10 p.m. Well, during the weekdays, 9.30, I would do it. So I, I would hit 21, and then I'd hit 30. So 21.30, 17.30 to 21.30. That's generally the time that I ran my show. After after 9 o'clock, I got very few visitors. And during the week, maybe during Christmas week, I, I let it run a little later. But um, but after, after 9 o'clock, people aren't watching the show. It's just I don't want to – there's no need to run them if nobody's going to enjoy them. So um, – 
Then we have a couple other little things down here. Uh, we have gracefully interrupt any lower priority playing schedule. We have hard stop at end time. And so if you want this show to end at 2130, it could be in the middle of Mariah Carey singing All I Want for Christmas is, and then it hard stops right in the middle of the verse. Uh, so you can have that option. Uh, you, multiple playlists. Uh, we'll we'll kind of talk about that after we get this one put in there. Um, we have a refire frequency, and this this is by default always set to fire once. So so in other words, you can create a schedule that only plays once, uh, or you can you, you can schedule a schedule. You can schedule a playlist that only plays once. And so if you only wanted this to play once, and it from seventeen thirty to twenty one thirty would only fire one time. But you have this little caveat. You have this little loop. If if you if you if you uncheck the loop, it will only fire once. But if you have this selected as loop, it's going to disregard the frequency. It's going to disregard anything that you have here. But you have some refire frequencies that you can try using. You can you can have a show, let's say, that is um, uh, that you want to play every 30 minutes. Maybe you want to play it every 20 minutes. Maybe you want to play it every 15 minutes. Maybe it's only maybe it's only uh, three songs, and you wanted to play. Uh, three songs every 15 minutes or 10 minutes or every five minutes you could play. You could play whatever it is. You could play it every five minutes or whatever. Um, I generally like to just loop my playlist. That's that's how I enjoy doing it. Um, I, I've never used a maximum number of loops. Uh, and you can shuffle the songs that are in your playlist. If you have a specific order that you want everything to play in, the order is selected whenever you're actually in here creating the show playlist and then from this point from this point here you can give this a priority now if you're only running one show you don't need to worry about priority priority is kind of the the next level the advanced level of kind of doing uh, different things in x schedule but uh for now if we were creating a show we were going to do this every single night this is exactly what we would do monday through sunday this is the time it starts this is the time it ends we can click ok and bam we have a show scheduled so you can see here it shows that the schedule will play next it will the, it will play the daily schedule on 11 24 at 17 30 hours so that's just looking at it you could have a bunch of different things uh on there scheduled um but another thing that I, I think a number of people might be considering right now is well what if i have a different set of hours that i want to run the same show for um what am i going to do if i run my schedule uh and and i have like fridays and saturdays i want to keep it open later uh, because you know the kids are out later or whatever. Um, so what you can do is you can come up here, select the schedule, and you can uh, create another one here. And we can go with the exact same dates: 11, 24, 20, 23. And we can go down here to uh, 12, whoop, 12, 30, 20, 23. And what we can do is instead of using these checkboxes, we can deselect the ones that we don't want to run. So Fridays and Saturdays, that's when the kids can stay out later, we'll say it might be helpful to have that schedule play uh, until uh, 10 or even 10.30. So 10 p.m. is 2200 hours. We can change it to 22.30 if you like. Uh, and maybe you start at 1700 hours on Fridays and Saturdays. Maybe you start your show early. Uh, so you can do that as well. Um, Again, I have this set to loop. Uh, if I only, if I wanted to play, if it's only a couple songs, I can have it play every 30 minutes. Uh, but basically, that's that's the uh, simple way. Oh, and you can come up here. This is another good idea. We could call this our weekend schedule. And well, now we've got two schedules there, but they're overlapping because if you double click on this, you can see Friday, Saturday. But we need to go back here and we need to edit this. And we want this to not play Fridays and Saturdays because we want the other schedule to run on Fridays and Saturdays. So this is the simplest way uh, that you can utilize the functions in X schedule to create a very simple playlist. Um, let's say also that we want to call this a different name too because this would be the weekday schedule. And that way you can look at a glance. If nothing's selected in the screen, you can look at a glance and say, hey, we're going to do a weekday schedule or we have a weekend schedule. 
and uh, you can click on either one of those uh, and activate them. You can select play selected and it will start to play it. Um, but we'll go ahead and stop that. So, so those are some of the functions. If you want to add more, I just double clicked. All I did was double click on the show and that brings up the simple playlist and you can add more into here if you want. Like I said, if you if you wanted to add uh, some audio, you could come in here, grab a song, uh, and put it in there. You can click and drag to move things around. Uh, it, 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 if if I have more FSEQ files, you could see more FSEQs in there, and that would be more interesting and so forth. Um, but you you could also uh, put videos in here to play. Uh, that would definitely be helpful. Um, so that would be that would be the simplest way to create a show now now what if what if you had two different playlists let's say you had 10 different songs and you wanted to play five songs one night and five songs the other night well uh then we what we could also do is we could come up here and we could rename this schedule to be uh show list a and we can also clone it. We can hit the clone button. We can double click on it here and call this show list B. And now that you've been able, you've been able to take a seat, uh, take a take a show and clone it. Um, unfortunately, you can't, to my knowledge, clone a schedule. That would be super helpful. Uh, but um, you can clone a show and you can have a second set you can come in here you can delete these items off of here by using the delete key uh, or you can select it and whoops you can select it and hit the delete button down there either work um, and then you can go in and you can add in your FSEQs that um, that were uh, that whatever it was that you were going to be using uh, in opposite nights and so what you would then do is you would then base your schedule off of this you would schedule this for uh, I want this to play Mondays let's say uh, Monday Wednesday Friday and Sunday and you can do it for the hours let's say of uh, 1730 to 2130 and so this could be oh I didn't name it list B and we call this Monday Wednesday Friday Saturday or Sunday and that way I can look at it and I can say oh this is what I scheduled this list to be now I can come up here and I can hit uh, I think I can right click and delete Yep, we can delete that schedule. Now we can schedule this one. Uh, we can schedule this one to be um, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And we can name this one Playlist A. And we can call, and since we checked those boxes, just so without having to go back and look at it and open it up all the time, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday and so now you have these two schedules this one's going to run from 1730 to 2130 on these three nights and then you can have two different lists that play your schedule now obviously I think I, I think I scheduled this one for for here this would be 20 if we were being if we were being uh, accurate we would do it like this um, 11 24 2023 and then we had 12 30 2023 and so so now either one of these they're both going to start the same night but it looks like um thursday thursday is the first day of the schedule but you can see here the the on 11 24 do we have thursday scheduled there no, we don't. So it won't play on the Thursday, but that's the first day. That's the next day that it's going to play. Uh, if it were going, if it could play, it would play, but it's not scheduled to play on it. It's only scheduled for Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, and then this one would play on the twenty fifth. Now, why is that doing that? Or am I got my dates wrong? Did I get my dates wrong? I could have got my dates wrong. This whole oh, I did. I did get my dates wrong. Ha! I'm a dumb dumb. Oh well, life goes on. Um, 
that was Friday. That's why, because it was a Friday. That's why it would come on a, uh, on a Saturday. So that Friday would be the first night that the show comes on. I was thinking Thanksgiving night, guys. Uh, so forgive me. Um, can you swap the positions of the... Uh, so uh, a handyman, Dan, asked uh, in chat. He said, can you swap the positions of these? Uh, and unfortunately, no. You could have a bunch of schedule list items here. You could schedule till your heart's content uh, for whatever show playlist that you want to. Uh, you can't clone a schedule. You can only clone a playlist. But if you added a schedule, or if you, excuse me, if you right-click added a schedule, you could name this. Um, you could get you could get really. You can get really detailed. Oh, wait. Hey, this is Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Wait a second. Friday, I want this to run later because it's Friday night. Maybe I uh, the the maybe I want it to go till 10.30 uh, p.m. And I'm going to start it at 1,700 hours, which is 5 p.m. And I'm going to, to uh, do Friday late nights. So now I have Friday late nights here. I can come up here and I can uncheck Fridays because I don't want that schedule to play then. So now, now I have, oop, and, and I need to change this because I just took Friday off of there. So I have Friday's late night, list B. And so Monday, Wednesday, Sunday, it would play the shorter nights and Friday nights it would play later, but it's only going to play on this playlist B. And it didn't mess around with playlist A in the way that we have that. So... Yeah, you can't swap these. You can't click and drag them and move them in different orders. That would be really, really awesome. That's a great uh, feature request, but I have a feeling that that might be a little bit more work than the developers might want to uh, put into it. So good good question, Dan, uh, or Gerald, I should say. Um, un uh, unfortunately, no. Yeah, you can't move. Once uh, you, you can only manually schedule... Uh, each individual list and you can't swap them say oh I like this one better for this one no you can't do that so um, and and then in, in order to wait for the playlist to start all you have to do is just wait for the time to start next schedule will schedule it and play it um, there really isn't much more to the basics of doing X schedule we could we could talk for uh, couple hours on the whole whole topic but uh let me know what you think in the comment section down below guys if you're in uh facebook by all means uh give us a like on the video put your comments in the video I, i'm sorry i wasn't able to follow along too many technical difficulties tonight but um i hope i was able to get some of the information out for you guys that was a little bit more helpful and if you haven't been using x schedule uh maybe you can see that it's very simple to set up a simple show um you can see all your controllers yeah again i don't have 30 controllers set up here that i can show you uh maybe when the season gets going we could do a live version of this uh where i actually have my show going and uh, i could mess with people out in the yard or something i don't know but uh if you have any questions uh if you're on facebook uh jump in the zoom room uh guys if you have uh any comments put them in the in the comment section down below so i can read them and uh if you have any suggestions for videos by all means put those in the comments as well uh we appreciate you guys we hope you appreciate the things we do here and if you do consider signing up for one month of the ppd sequence club where you can pick any song for the month of november it is pick your own sequence month for november i'm sure some of the people in chat can tell you i've seen i've seen the, the club members are uh, going crazy this month with their selections so uh, if you join the ppd sequence club this month you get your oh uh, you get to pick any song in the store that is a pro or original layout sequence the pros ten dollar upgrade uh, come back and after you make your first purchase or you pick your first sequence, come back and get the second one for 50% off. Um, so there you have it, guys. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you for joining us. Uh, and hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Good luck on your setup and thanks for joining us. Take care and bye for now.